the cloud. All right, guys, top of the morning and happy, happy Friday to each of you guys. Obviously, I have tons and tons of things on my mind. It's been a very powerful, impactful, emotional last couple of days. And so we'll get into all of that. So a lot of stuff on my mind today. Um, so before, as always, in true fast form, I want to have somebody bring us out on the field. I'm actually going to go to Melissa Ross. I don't know if I've ever called on you for this. Um, so Melissa Ross, thank you for our morning routine. Um, I know like people ask you about it. The baby's opening up the doors. I think it's the cutest thing every single morning. So Melissa, I want to turn it over to you. Bring the team out on the field, out on the court, and let's get ready for game day. So Melissa Ross, without further ado, bring the team out on the field or the court. Um, let's see. Well, you know, it's the market is shifting, so I know it can get discouraging, um, but I would just say to love what we do and keep going and just keep telling people that they still need to get their houses and everybody needs to stop renting and get their own place and yeah good I love, it. I love it here's the thing you guys um it, it's never the market right we've been saying this i'm going to say it again we're going to talk about this dialogue over and over and over it is never the market Here's what happens with agents that don't succeed when the market gets challenging. First things first, let's talk about this. Over the last three years, it was really, really easy to sell a shit ton of homes. Promise you guys, it was easy. It was easy. Now it's getting a lot more challenging. So the agents that don't make it are not that they don't have good talent. It's not that they're not good people. It is their inability to create and control the narrative and how they can uh, convey the message to a consumer, right? Your marketing message needs to change based on what's happening around us. The market will change, patterns will shift, consumer behaviors will change. We talk about this all the time. It's not the market, it is your inability to articulate this effectively about what's happening in the market. That's why winners, there's winners that have won in every single market. And I'm so glad that you said this, Melissa, because you guys can hear a theme. We've been talking about this over the last couple of weeks. I'm going out to Vegas next month. We're going to talk about this even more. We're going to continue to work and be masterful on our dialogue, you guys. I cannot tell you how important that is, because when you master that, no matter what happens, you're just adjusting your sale and course correcting a little bit but you're still going to the same destination and that's your success. So good stuff. Thank you, Melissa. So you guys, I got tons of things on my mind, but what we're going to do is we're going to have a couple conversations with a few people today about production because uh, it's exciting. It's exciting what's going on, but I, I want to share three things with you that are on my mind. Obviously my Alaska trip, my daughter's still sleeping. She's right over there. Um, you guys, this is literally my second time that I've ever been able to spend some time with her. She's going to be six in August. Um, so this is a, it's a long story. I won't go through all of it, you know, cause she's obviously right here, but you know, like just to be able to have this time, like it is now in the court orders that I get her for six weeks in the summer and, you know, tons of other time, but like just to, to be able to go and get her and have this experience. I mean, we're in Union Square. We're going to go to the office today. We're going to do all these things. Her brother's excited that she's here. Like just been a really, really emotional couple of days. And so, um, you know, for the people that do have children out there, it's like, just, just spend some time with them. Like kids spell love, T-I-M-E. That's all they want. They just want some time with us. And like, for me, I'm just grateful to be able to spend the next, you know, three weeks with her and spend some time doing cool stuff and dinners and spend time with the family. And like, you know, there's nothing too crazy that I want to do. I just want to spend some time. So you guys are filled with emotion, filled with gratitude just to be able to have her here and she's stoked <laughs> she's just so stoked to be in san francisco she lives in alaska she's never been to a place like san francisco which we all get to experience all the time and here she is five years old having the best adventure of her life so really really excited um so you guys obviously let's talk about the warriors this is it, it, it's it's you know let's let's throw it up you guys let's hear a little excitement about the warriors like Here's the thing, and it's crazy to think about this. Like, a lot of people counted the Warriors out this year. They said they'll be good. You know, they're, they're going to be a good team, but they just don't maybe have what it takes to be champions again this year. Maybe they're going to get there in the coming years. And you know what? They, they counted Steph out. 
they, they said like Steph wasn't that person, right? He wasn't like one of the best of all time. He didn't have this. Like people want to find like, like, like holes in his game, right? And like, look at what he accomplished, right? Look at what he accomplished. He, he, he turned every single skeptic out there in the world, a true, true, true believer and took home that MVP. And, you know, I just think it's absolutely incredible. So before we talk about business, like just from the warrior standpoint, since we are a Bay Area team, what are some things that you guys saw? Like what stood out? When we think about like winners find a way, champions find a way, leave it all on the court, do whatever it takes, fingers in the air, I'm going to win. Like I want to hear from you guys what this win means to you. And Chris, being an athlete, being a basketball star, let's hear from you, bro. Um, I, it's, it's Curry's confidence that I've noticed. Curry's out there. He's he's boasting and bragging, man. And it's like Curry, he, he doesn't come from that. And just to see him come out like, yes, I'm the man, like he was saying, all you doubters, forget y'all, man, go to sleep, me and my ring. What's up? I'm out here with my wife, my kids. Is this, you know what I'm saying? It, it, that's it's, that's all confidence. That's nothing but pure confidence and believing in yourself. And and that's the biggest thing I saw because of. Like I said, he he started Simeon a few years ago, but all this mugging and doing all that, that's confidence, man. Man, I love it. And 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 you know, being an athlete, like how much time do you think that he spends behind the scenes practicing the shots that he oh man uh, the way he makes he, it, to us, he makes it look easy. Like the, what, the, way, he, the way he shoots, he's at least he's at least an hour and two hours in the morning, and then you then you you lift. Then you got to do film and then you got to do all your, 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 your requirements to be a, a professional. And then at nighttime, he's shooting again. So he's at least shooting three, four times a day. They're spending seven to eight hours. So how we nerd out on being realtors, that's how they nerd out on being athletes. You know what I mean? And at that level, you have to have a focus. You have to be on time. You can't be late five minutes. Just it's, it's all right. Just so so let's, st let's stay here for a quick second. And, and I was looking for that correlation. Like, what's the correlation in what he does to prep and what champions do to prep to prepare in correlation to what you do in real estate? Let's hear that. It's, it's basically the same thing. Like, like I said, with the film, they go back and reevaluate themselves. Oh, I should have picked, came off this screen a little harder. Oh, I shouldn't have made that pass. Same thing as when we do our buyer's consultations and we're recording. Go back and see what you should have said differently. Okay. Oh, that, that facial expression means this. It, it's, it's just all, it's all, okay, same thing we're reading. They're into mindfulness and EQ. All that is mental. It, it's a bonding thing that has to go along. That's the same thing with team. They all meet right here and get on the same page. Uh, Steph, look at, look at, um, look at, um, what, what's, what's Poole? Devin Poole, or, or excuse me, uh, what's the name? Poole, what's Poole, first name? Whatever. Anyway, Poole, he got the Curry mindset now. Now he's shooting like he's Curry. It all yeah. rubs out of, of it. You need your mentors. You need every. You need your. You need. You need your coaches. You need your teammates. You need. You need yourself. Most importantly, you have to make sure that you get enough sleep. You putting the right things in your body, all that stuff. And this. And this. Um, it's just cycles. We did it today. Yes. Now it's time to do it tomorrow. It's the same exact thing, except you don't have to worry about being as fatigued. And that's 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 what I like about being a realtor. I ain't got to come all that. Right? You know, there's no ice baths after your hard day of prospecting, right? So, so I love this, you guys. I'm always looking for correlations because let's think about it. You guys have the ability, and you should, you have the ability to go back and watch tape. How do I sound? Like when Chris just said, like, well, what were some nonverbal cues? When I said this, the client said, mm, or they looked down like, What's he talking about, right? Like you have an ability to truly, truly watch tape. You have the ability to prospect at the highest level. So you have to go into the office and shoot your shots and shoot your shots, shoot your shots, come to team meetings, come to your small little huddles, come to your offensive sessions, come to your defensive sessions. That's part of you guys playing like a champion. You can't come to a session or come to a, uh, the office and maybe prospect once a week and be like, oh no, I'm a champion. Yeah, I'm a champion. I'm with the number one team in the world and I'm a champion. No, you need to show up, you guys. You need to do the work. And if that message hits anybody on this call, good. Good. Because we sometimes stand you, and go ahead. You got to earn your respect, too. Same here with same here with uh, Team Fast. Team Fast, number one team. Well, what are you doing to be a part of that team? Are you just uh, are you just using, taking advantage of what the systems have? Or are you, are you making something happen with those systems that you have? Man, I, 
I love it, man. I love it. We're gonna hear from two other people and, and then we're gonna continue on. I got some other things. Uh, Teresa Davis, I'm gonna go over to you and then Otis, I'll come to you. Teresa, I saw some reactions when Chris was talking. I saw you point to your head. So tell me, like, what do you see in like this championship mentality and the correlation to what you do right now in this industry? I wanna hear from you. And Teresa, you've stepped up in a big way. I've seen you get outside of your comfort zone. You were a little shy at first. You were a little timid at first when you were coming to the office. You're like, I just don't know what to do. But now you're doing the things that you said at one time, you didn't know what to do. So you've stepped up. So Teresa, I wanna hear from you. Yeah, <clears throat> it is really a mindset and you really have to come outside of your, your, your mind, outside of yourself. And for me, it was really a challenge having worked for the government for 30 years. I had a separate process. And so it, it's been a learning curve for me. It's been a whole complete like rebuild of me, you know, and, and so yeah, that means coming to the huddles, the, the huddles, being on camera. Man, prospecting was awesome. So that's another thing that I'm going to be doing, hitting the streets, talking to people, because that continues to build the confidence that you need to be out there and make those three pointer, pointers. To, when people are booing you and booing you and keep asking you, have you sold a house? Have you sold a house? Have you sold a house? And you have it, you have to push through. You have to push through all of that. And it, it really is a mindset. And Chris, you right on it. It was so great meeting up with the group prospecting the other day that just, that man, that boosted my confidence two more notches. So mm. it's part of being connected to, you know, man. I love I can this. go on I, about it, but it just, it excites me. No, it Teresa, just excites me. you know what excites me? You excite me. <laughs> here's why. Like, like just, you want to know what, what gives me satisfaction in my role is growth within you guys. That gives me satisfaction. Because if you guys aren't growing, then my role really doesn't even make sense, right? Like my job is to make sure that I help you guys reach the goals that you want to reach in your lives. I want to help you grow. I want to push you outside of your comfort zone. So Teresa, I love that. That's excitement for me. Otis, I'm going to come to you in a few minutes. I'm actually going to have you kind of bring us full circle because um, I know you have tons of shit on your mic. I feel it. I'm going to come to you because I, <laughs> I want to end with you. But I want to share some things with you. And Teresa, you reminded me of this. I made some notes this morning. And I want to share this with you. It's from the book. And I don't know if you guys have this yet, but please make sure to grab the book. Uh, let's see. Wait, wait, wait. There it is. <laughs> to the Impossible. This is a game changer book. Highly, highly recommend that you guys pick up that book and dive into it. But I'm going to share some things that I took when I was reading on the plane. Satisfaction in life comes from the experience. We've been condi conditioned to chase the result. Success isn't our ultimate purpose. We exist to grow, to love, to expand, and to share our passion with the world, right? It's the old adage. It's not the destination. It's the journey. Because I promise you, Teresa is experiencing growth. She's doing things that are outside of her comfort zone. She's talking with team members. She's out on the streets knocking on doors. So she's experienced this jovial spirit of growth. She's experiencing getting past any hurdles that she possibly had. She was in the same position for 30 years in a corporate position, right? Now she's learning new skills and like waking up in a new different way. That right there is going to lead to her eventually getting into contract because she's doing the work. It's not the contract that's that fucking exciting, right? Cool. I got, I got in the contract. I got paid. It's all the things that you learned about yourself throughout that journey. That's just the one little small point. I got in the contract to close. I got that check. All right, cool. That is a moment in time. All the other stuff is the feeling, the emotion, the experience, the grind, the hustle, the, oh my God, I'm scared. You know what? Oh my God, I'm not scared anymore. You guys, I get, right? I think about this so much like, oh my God, I'm not scared anymore. I remember a time when, you guys, I got goosebumps talking about this. I remember a time when I was scared. Like, I'm not scared anymore. So, Teresa, I appreciate you, you popping off this morning. Accepting the challenge of being exceptional is deciding to experience the exhilaration of leaving our comfort and pursuing expansion. Think about that, you guys. Really, really powerful book. Sometimes I pick up a book and it just hits me. This one hit me. 
I want to ask you guys a, a couple questions and then I'm going to turn it over to uh, Will. We're going to have a really high level conversation and I want to talk to Ilona as well. So Ilona, get ready because I'm going to have you uh, answer a couple questions. I want to ask you guys, as you guys are growing, as you are grinding, as you are building, as you are loving, as you are raising kids, as you are being in grandbabies' lives, whatever stage of life that you are currently in right now, I want you to look at your life and say, what does that look like in 10 years, right? Like this out, you guys, in 10 years, I'm going to be 52 years old. Like, like future cast your life. Like take some time to like look at your life in 10 years from now. Who have you become? How did you impact the lives around you? Where do you live? How's your life, right? Like ask yourself these things. Like I'm not doing this right now just so I can have some cool things and save some money and buy a house. Like, how am I going to shape the future of my children's lives? If they want to go to college, they're going to be able to. If they want to be YouTubers, they can go and do that. If they want to do this new crazy position that doesn't even exist because the world is changing so fast, then go do that. I don't care. But I want you guys to look at like everything that you're doing and know like, and I'm building something for them, for the future. I want to buy my mom a house. My mom is coming into an inheritance in a, in a few years. You know, I, I don't want to obviously put an expiration date on my grandma, but she knows that in one day she's going to, to um, inherit some money. I don't want her to use that money to purchase a house. Like, I want to buy her that house. I want to buy her a nice little condo that she can just retire in and raise her little dog with my, with my stepdad. So I want you guys to think about that. I don't need an answer now. And I don't care if I ever hear that answer. I want that to be something that you are aligned with. It's important. Where do you see yourself? What does life look like in 10 years? What have you become? How did you impact the lives of the people around you? Where do you live? How's your life? Not only where you live physically, but where do you live emotionally? I want to start off with those thoughts, you guys, and put everyone in a state. Let's talk a little bit about production. So I have Will on, and Will Dangler is up in his new summer home up in Lake Tahoe. And he hit me this morning. And it's really cool waking up to, to text. Well, I was already awake, but it's cool getting these type of text messages early in the morning. Here was the text message. It says, I have the bandwidth to be on coaching this AM. I closed eight to nine units in the, I closed eight to nine units in the next three weeks. Check that out, you guys. Closing eight to nine units in the next three weeks, I want to have this conversation. So if you guys are cool with this, I want to talk to Will. I want to talk to him about momentum. What's going on? How does he have all this production? And how is he still on the beach dating some deputy up in Tahoe in a bikini that's doing uh, pole dancing exercises up there with his daughter, giving her the best life? How are you doing it, bro? Let's have this conversation. Wow, that's a hell of an intro. What's up, everybody? Good morning. Um, first of all, Warriors for Curry MVP. That I, I'm really charged about that this morning. Um, thank you for that. I I, I feel so smitten. Um, I was very man. Team Fast came into my life at the beginning of 2022. And uh, we were running a successful company in some ways. We were really good in production. I did 23 million last year in production, um, but a lot of challenges on flipping and development side. And I met Elias and Kenny, and these guys really inspired me to focus on my core competencies. And uh, to be honest with all you guys, I, I got competitive again, to be real with you. Uh, I'm a U.S. submarine sailor. I was, I'm a kid from Pittsburgh, PA. Um, went in the military, was always competitive to be the best at everything that I did. U.S. submarines, try to be in the, the fastest ever qualified. You know, I kind of lost that fire. Um, I'm 41 years old. Uh, I've got a 10-year-old daughter. Her mom passed two and a half years ago. And i uh, kind of like lost my drive a little bit, you know, and things. And Team Fast really inspired me. Um, this company has really exceptional leadership um, and great talent, to be honest with you. 
uh, I feel very humbled to be a part of this team. And to be honest, when I got back in, I told Elias, I was like, I want to be competitive. You know, you guys are doing some badass shit. And uh, I started to get after it. Um, I really wanted to dig deep. So I sell vineyards. I sell commercial properties, residential. I'll sell mobile homes. I don't care what the deal is. We have uh, Zillow going that we're paying for. We have Op City coming in, uh, referral leads. Um, I'm a lead guy myself. So I have a couple thousand targeted properties that I go after that I've skipped traced. I, if you guys don't know about lead science, you can hit me up anytime. I will give you whatever of my energy I can for you. If I have the bandwidth, you just got to text me. Don't email me. Um, you know, but we are pulling targeted lists of, you know, 25% equity properties that are owned by individuals, not LLCs or corps running them through skip tracers, putting them into our CRM systems. They're getting, we're throwing them through Mojo dollars. They're getting called, they're getting texts, they're getting emails. They're getting maybe eight or nine points of contact before I harvest. I'm pulling $1.2 million listings in Concord in your guys' territory. I'm chilling on the beach in Tahoe, working on a cell phone on a paddleboard, you know? And I don't say that with ego. Um, I had to find a balance of doing what I do and being there for my kid. You know, we had a conversation about two months ago. My kid was like, oh, this is great. You're doing all this stuff but I feel like you're not really present for me. So I'm trying to find a way to be the best at what I do in real estate while being the best dad that I can be, which I maybe have not been the best at, you know? I look at guys like Elias and, you know, not throwing his shit out, but for those of you on the call that know what he just fought for so that he can be even more present, the shit matters, you know? Dads matter, moms matter. For all of you single parents on the call, I give you props because uh, it's not easy. Uh, I brought one of my best friends who I was in submarine school with in Connecticut 24 years ago. He was a boomer. He was a uh, one of the submarines that shoots the ballistic missile submarine or ballistic missiles. I brought my buddy out to run an arm of my company for me. So this guy is working 60 hours a week on lead science. Um, if I were to sit on this call and be like, yeah, I'm just balling because I'm cool, that'd be weak. Uh, I have a homie who's coming into team fast. He's almost done with his real estate licensing or his real estate licensing. But that guy is working his ass off for team fast and branding us and wearing team fast hoodies everywhere he goes because he's proud to be a part of this company. And it's not just what I taught him, it's what Team Fast has taught him, it's him being in on coaching calls. And uh, I wish I was in on these calls all the time, I'm working a lot. But to take it back to Golden State, man, it's about hitting those reps, you know? It's in practice. Uh, every day of my life, I'm, I get up, early. I'm running in the morning. I'm a big boy. I work my ass off to not be obese. You know, I get out and I run with my Huskies and I get back and I meditate for 30 minutes and I get on my calls and I'm doing everything that I can. And I'm, I'm working a lot of deals and we're moving shit. And if you guys haven't learned how to partner with team fast agents, man, I got to tell you, I made some money this year by being solid for my teammates and you know, I've got some pretty tight core competencies. I can do a lot of things. If you're good at something, put it out to the team, share with them, uh, share your skills. Don't just pay someone a hundred. Well, I can't just say this for everybody, but don't just pay someone a hundred dollars to go show a property for you. You know, there, there are men and women on this call where I might be like, Hey, I, I can't cover this. I've got a deal down here. Instead of me trying to give them 100 or 200 bucks, I'm like, how about we split, go 50-50? Or if you're only going to open a door, I'll do 20% with you. Uh, and you open up for inspections and you, you build 
partnerships with people within your company. This is, if I'm not mistaken, Elias, this is the number one team in EXP in the country on units. Sales, sales volume. Sales volume. Sales volume, right? Like this team has the skill set. Tap your people, you know? There is so much strength to be had in sharing your core competencies with each other. And well, I, I absolutely love this conversation. I, I had a couple of questions for you. Um, I think I think it's important, like like when you know you've been in the game for for a long time. Like when, after all your efforts, the systems, the mentality, the knocks on the chin. Like when did it fir like first start to like really take off to give you like the momentum that you have now? You're going to be closing, you know, eight to nine deals in the next coming weeks. Like like when was there like a moment, a catalyst time in your career that said, you know what? Now, after all that shit, all those reps, all the shots, like when did it start to really, really take off for you? Man, that's a loaded question. Uh, my ego would like to tell you that I've always had it locked down. Uh, that would not be true. I, I've gone up and down depending on how I've invested in my marketing systems or truth be told how hard I was in the paint, right? Uh, how hard I was showing up to practice. Um, I was very... I got the call that I was invited to go to Cabo last month. You know, I was tied for first in production in, in units last month. And I, I was very humbled by that. We have a badass fucking team, pardon my language. Um, that kind of kicked me into gear harder. I had, I didn't know that, you know, I, that kicked me in even harder. I'm like, Oh shit. I was tied for first with the top talent in the state. You know what I mean? Like, I want to dive deeper. So it, to be honest with you, it made me work harder. The, the answer to your question is when I got brought into this team, you know, truth be told, I, I didn't really show up in coaching very well over the last month or two. I, I moved up to Tahoe and had a lot of units going on. And I mean, it's just absolute craziness when you're doing that much volume, you know? Um, but I have heard so many success stories about people in this company that are climbing and climbing and the I'm watching sales volume and like people are closing $2 million deals and shit. Like I have to be honest with you, the fire under my ass is lit now. I want to do more and more. And the funny thing is this company is so dope and the people in it are so good that it's actually kind of killed my, fire to want to beat everybody like the military kind of thing that I had like the I, I'm stepping more into the career role of where I just I just want to ball out with the top talent mm. and I don't feel compelled to be the best at anything right now I just want to ball the hardest that I can with every fiber of my being be the best dad that I can try to emulate the leadership in our company and to be honest with you contribute you know I want to be the person that someone can dish rock to. And I'm really trying hard to be that. Dude, I love this. And, and I heard a, a quote last week and I thought it was really, really powerful. Um, champions run towards accountability, not from accountability, right? So so put me in coach. Yeah, throw the ball to me. Like, hey, you wanna do a script role play? Put me on blast. Like, like I wanna show up, right? Champions run towards accountability they don't run away from accountability. And the fact that you're closing eight to nine units, but still said, you know what? I want to be here. I want to contribute. I, mean, I want to hear something from somebody on the line today that's going to inspire me. Like that's a true champion right there. And so, Will, I, you know, everything that you've been through in the last couple of years, man, like you've, you are still growing. You're still finding ways to do things different. And because here's the thing, like partnership deals for a lot of people that have been in this game for a while, that's not really that common. A lot of people do deals for years and years and years. They never partner with agents, but that's part of our philosophy as a company. And it's part of being able to leverage and give the best consumer experience. So, well, I absolutely love this. And I was hoping to catch um, Ilona. I know that you know Ilona. I want to um, ask her a couple of questions because Ilona just got into her first contract. And I don't know if you guys saw that on social media. So, so like different ends of the spectrum, like let's look at this. You have somebody that's going to close eight to nine units in just the next three years, the three weeks. And then you have somebody that just got into her first contract and everything in between on this call. That's why I love group coaching. Ilona, I know you're driving, but I could see the, the, the physiology. 
I can see it written all over your face. Can you tell us a little bit about where your head's at right now, where your emotions are at right now? Absolutely, guys. I am so pumped. It took me less than 90 days to close my first deal. And I was able to do it with my sister, who has been really like the person who brought me to EXP, the person who exposed me to Team Fast, even though she's not part of Team Fast. She has been my accountability partner, my mentor. And the one thing that I got the most out of real estate is actually my relationship with my sister is solid. And if it wasn't for even selling any houses, it would have been worth getting into it for that and the support that I'm getting from you guys and my family that I didn't have in the past. And I'm just ready, man. I want to sell everybody a house. I got <laughs> houses all day. I got contracts to sign. I'm showing 10 properties today at one o'clock. I am just riding this fire and this is the first of many. And I'm so, so very stoked and grateful for everybody on this call, for Will, for, for Elias, for my sister, for Peter, my mentor, for everybody. And guys, it's just amazing. Like it, it, this, it's just like this one thing that happened, it, it's pushed me even further into realizing that this is where I need to be. This is what I'm good at. This is what drives me is getting people into their home, watching my buyer be so excited that our offer got accepted. And he's been living in an Airbnb, so he's stoked. But um, I'm just really grateful and I'm excited to keep the energy moving. This is the oh, first time. I love this, Ilona. And you know, like literally, it's nothing to do with the money, right? The money is a byproduct. It comes and goes. But like somebody asked me a long time ago, like, what do you do? Like, we are the great emancipators of the dream. And when you think about that, when Ilona said, like, how happy her buyers were, think about the experiences, the memories, the dinners, the cookouts, the family, the Christmas, the kids growing up in the neighborhood, riding their bikes and meeting the neighbor kids or maybe getting in their first fight or whatever it is, right? Like all these things that their family is going to experience because of this experience through Ilona and her help and her finding a home. So it's like so much bigger. And sometimes it's like, we got to look at that down the road because it's so important. So Ilona, I love how excited you are. Cortez, same to you, big dog. You, uh, your experience, your first closing as well, right? As a Team Fast member, and so, dude, we see you, bro. You've been working. You've been showing up. You've been doing it, man. So where's your head at? How are you feeling emotionally? Emotionally, uh, I, you know, I feel grateful, first off, just because it's my first deal. And, you know, just it took a while, right? But um, I feel a lot smarter and a lot more confident and, you know, just want to uh, make another deal. You know, I feel like I've been calling and introducing myself a lot more. You know, since then, just knowing that I can uh, talk to someone, I know exactly what I'm talking about. I've run through the buyer consultations. I, I know what the market is. And um, I just feel confident that I can get them through the whole uh, transaction. Wow. You know, he, he said he feels smarter. Like, I, I love that, man. Like, because when you're <clears throat> when you feel that you're intelligent about something, that is going to provide you a high level of confidence, right? If I feel super, super intellectual about something, I'm going to walk into any scene and be like, whoa, that guy, that guy's super confident about that. Heck yeah. So I love this, Cortez. I love it, bro. Go on. Um, me and Teresa were uh, door knocking partners and uh, she was killing it. She knew exactly what she was talking about as well. We were actually feeding off each other really good. We had a good time. That, that time we were out there, it went like rather fast knocking doors. So it was a That's good experience. Right. He definitely knew what she was talking about. And man, I've seen both of you grow. Like this is this is just an amazing, amazing conversation. So um, shout out to you guys. And, and once again, you guys, that satisfaction in life comes from the, the experience. Success isn't our ultimate purpose. We exist to grow, to love, to expand, and to share our passion with the world. And I'm seeing that and I'm feeling that on this call. So love, love, love this conversation. Um, I want to go over to Dan Sunberg. Dan Sunberg just got back from an amazing experience. Um, I'm sure you did some reflection time. So really quick, Dan, where did you go? How long were you gone? And what are some things that you reflected upon while you were away, man? Because this is, this is like a bucket list trip for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. So I spent, uh, uh, my wife and I spent 25 days, mostly out in Scotland. Um, so we've been playing this trip for about eight months or so. Uh, and about half of it was a backpacking trip. So like totally off the grid, just went, 
went out, walked around the highlands and, and, you know, through, through the locks and all that stuff. And they'd been something that we'd really wanted to do for, uh, for a while. And as, as far as like reflection on it, I think one of the things that I was thinking about the most while, while we were out there was just being very, uh, very grateful to be able to do a trip like that. Like 25 days is a long time. Uh, it was a long time to be, to be away from everything. And just thinking about like my old W2 job, like there's, there's no way I would have been able to do something like that. And that's something that, you know, I'm super, super, super grateful to be in real estate to be able to do stuff like that, like that for me, that's a big part of the reason that I'm in this business is, you know, when, when we sat down eight months ago, my wife and I, uh, we're both self-employed and we're like, I don't know, can you give yourself the time off work? Yeah, sure. All right. We can take that vacation and just decided like, all right, we're going to, we're going to do this and schedule it and then figure out how we're going to make it work. Uh, and, and leading up to it, you know, I was, I was kind of stressed out, uh, in the, in the couple months up ahead, uh, getting into the trip of like, what, what am I going to do with my clients? What am I going to do, you know, with, with, with my business, I'm going to take a full month off. Um, and one of the things that, uh, Will said that resonated with kind of uh, I think what enabled this this trip and really being able to have this experience was the idea of partnership. So one of the other agents here in Sacramento, Chris Samajan, covered covered all my leads. I had a closing while I was sitting on a lock up in the Highlands, 30 miles away from the nearest road that I'd walked into. And like that was all because I partnered with Chris and had a client that he was able to take across the finish line. Uh, and so that wouldn't have that wouldn't have happened, you know, if I tried to go solo or tried to handle all this stuff or just said, oh, you know, I got too much going on. I can't take this trip. Instead, it was just like, all right, we're going to do this. How are we going to make this happen? And it was through just relying on help from other people. So I'm super, super grateful. I think that was, that was one of my biggest, like, gratitudes and takeaways from it was just like, pick, pick a thing that you're going to do and then figure out how you're going to accomplish it. And if you have to bring other people in, you know, do it. Uh, because trying to, trying to accomplish something like that on, on your own, it's, I think, impossible. Man, you know what, dude? I love that you shared that. And it you could see this like sense of, I know you got a lot of work ahead of you. Um, um, Dan's going to be taking on a new role with our company, but um, you can just see it, man. You're just relaxed. Like you, like there's a, there's a point when if you're not going out and really, really take it in nature, like, like you, you need to stop, right? You need to do that. There's something that happens. Like I was, I only had three hours yesterday morning to go just before I got baby. But I found this cool little park and I saw these birds that I had never seen before in my life. And they were so loud. And I just sat there and like listened to the stillness of the water and the trees and the birds and nothing else. And like, we need more of that just to reflect, man. I can imagine how you felt sitting on top of that mountain and like, like how, how rewarded you felt by actually doing those long hikes, man. So mm -hmm. it's good to have you back, man. I'm looking forward to our conversations in the coming weeks and everything that you're going to bring to the table. So um, good to have you back. Good to see you, yeah. man. I'm glad that you did this. Um, Will, you had your hand up again, bro. Yeah, I did. I, I, man, I love the shit out of Dan Sunberg. And one of the things that, man, I definitely don't have all my shit figured out, but I know that there's a lot of working parents on this call, people that have left careers to put their all in on this, right? Like, there's no room for fucking failure, if I'm not mistaken. Everybody on this call, right? So what you have to remember is like those repetitions and all that, thing, all those things that you're going through, all the ways that you're pushing yourself. I know that you guys are on coaching calls. You guys are in boot camp. You're out doing open houses. You're showing properties. You're putting together some data science. It's a lot of work. If you don't take the time for yourself and your mind and your spirit to get right before you go to war and go to sleep and then do your shit. If you don't get back and reset it again and get back into your own headspace and have a moment for yourself before you go back in, you will get to a place that I got close. I, well, I can't even say I got close to, I, I've burned out in this stuff. You yeah. know, there are super talented people on this call and in this company. And if you guys are going to maximize your effectiveness, it is taking care of your mind, body, and soul, right? To be the best that you can in your business. I want to see all of you guys be successful. <laughs> now, you Go led ahead. the you led the call, Elias, on something that really hit me. I was, I've done, I did one of the hardest Spartan races in the world, the Spartan Agogi. 
60 hour race. Um, Joe DeSena, the CEO of Spartan Race, wrote a book. If you guys can write it down, it's called Spartan Up. It's about obstacle immunity. It's about hitting hitting problems in your life and being able to overcome it. It's not just a Spartan race. Some of the some of us in this call have done it, right? You hit an obstacle, you overcome it. You hit an obstacle, you overcome it. People quit a third of the way into a race. They're like, ah, oh, I'm fucking done, right? What is your ability to hit an obstacle and blow through that shit for 34 miles or for 60 hours, right? That that's what this shit takes. I, I, I had reluctance even telling you guys this stuff right now for me to close those units in the next couple of weeks, I have a seller financing happening on multi-million dollar deals. I have buyers that are getting squirrely. They're trying to manipulate sellers. Sellers are pissed off. Deals are going sideways. We're finding out in 1031s that people can't move money the way that they thought. So they're trying to manipulate the buyer and seller on the deal while I'm double ending one side to close another land deal. It's absolute ape shit bananas all the way around the board. And Derek, who I brought, you know, from the military, who's working with me, is like, how in the fuck are you handling this right now with sanity? I'm like, dude, I can't stress out. I lost an SBA loan for my company. Oh, the refinance for my bill that I have happening. The rates just went up. So the credit lines dried out. I could have cried the other day, uh, but I have nine deals and everybody's freaking out on each other. It, none of that shit matters. You have a job to do and there's money that has to be brought to the table for your kids, right? And the one thing that I wanted to leave you guys with, because I know I can chat all day long. When Elias led this call, he was talking about, you know, the purpose of really thinking about the purpose of your life. You know, I, I'm paraphrasing. But what I want to leave you guys with is I went through a Spartan X course. It's the businessman's, this, like the, the CEO's course that Spartan offered. And one of the most powerful things that I experienced in that course was where you had to write your own obituary. You had to write as if someone was speaking about you. Did you leave an impact on this world? Did, obviously it's not about money. What, what did you do that mattered to people around you, right? And I challenged everybody on this call to write that shit in email and send it to Elias. I would love to hear that. What, what would your end story be? You know, is it going to be selling some deals, partying, having fun, or is it going to be leaving a legacy, changing your community, training and developing people that, that didn't have an opportunity to be who you are in your seat right now? You know, that's the shit that matters, not the sales volume that you're closing, you know? Wow. The, the power and the impact that you leave on this world. And I have to tell everybody here, you're in the company that can give you the skills to leave an impact. Mm -hmm. So I, I would just like to leave you guys with that thought. Think about <clears throat> your last days, you know, man, that is, that's super, super powerful. And, and it's, it's probably going to be one of the hardest things if you guys choose to do that, it's going to probably be one of the hardest things that you guys do. Um, you know, getting this message this morning from Will, Will was inspired to want to share. And instead of just sharing with me, he's like, I, I want to share with the group. Right. And, and I think that that's, that's the power of these sessions. M my thought always going into these sessions, sometimes we'll get a little bit more technical. Sometimes we'll talk a little bit more strategy. Sometimes we'll have guest speakers on, but my intent, my intent is to be able to put everybody into a state. And that's what I do when I do public speaking engagements, when I'm on these calls, when we're in meetings, like I want to put everybody into a state. Sometimes it's not on me. Sometimes it's on you guys. You guys create the state that everyone is now thinking. Because by a show of hands, or give me a reaction below, how many people are thinking about life, maybe in a different way, just right now, right? Maybe about this obituary thing, purpose, all these, the kids, gratitude, the trip, Teresa, you know, Chris, Cortez, Ilona, like you guys are thinking. And so it should be able to put us into a state 
where we can now say, you know what, I'm going to state now I can go and create, right? I want to put all the negative shit, all the naysayers, all the doubt, all the trepidation, all that stuff is over here. And now I'm in a state where I can grow, right? That's what I want for you guys. And, and once again, I want to thank Ernesto for putting this book into my life. And, and there was a quote in the book and, and it's applicable. Like, I didn't know this conversation was going to go this way. I never know how it's going to go. That's why I love this. But it says, if you ever feel lost, ask yourself this. Am I living a life of reaction or am I living a life of creation, right? Live without limits. They only exist in our mind. Life wants to flow through you, so let it flow through you. So I want to go around the room, you guys. I want to get a couple key takeaways before we come circle uh, full circle on this. Uh, Janetta, you had your hand up. Let's uh, let's hear from you, Janetta. Um, key takeaways from today's sesh. Um, very emotional session. Probably one of the most emotional sessions. Um, one of my biggest struggles um, is finding me, Janetta Nuttall no military rank. Uh, I don't have a bunch of Marines running around to do all the dirty work, all the heavy lifting. So um, it's been a really big transition for me. It's been relaxing. I don't have, my F words have been minimized throughout the day and, and my stress levels have gone way, way down. Um, so for me, Today is, is a, a powerful movement for me to continue to find myself as a realtor. I love helping people. So that's, that's a, a big drive for me to continue to get better, to continue to hone in on my skills. I've only had my license for 45 days, so I'm still learning a shit ton of stuff. Sometimes these meetings are a little over my head, but today... Today was powerful and impactful. So mm. I got a lot out of today. And I just put that book in my Amazon uh, basket. So I'll be getting that really soon. And and the mental struggle is there. So Will, I'm right there with you, buddy. I don't know how long you've been out, but um, some days it is a struggle. But I got two little kids and I got a whole Camp Pendleton families that need me. So we just keep That's driving right. and keep That's pushing. Right. Well, well, Janetta, you know, once again, thank you for your service and thank you for sharing. And yeah, you're right. There's there's sessions I sit in, sometimes they don't hit. And 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 for you guys, you might come to coaching three times a week and maybe you get some good stuff at it, but I, there's going to be some moments where it hits and, and it's going to be different for everybody. So Janetta, thank you for sharing. Um, I want to go over to Jennifer Schmidt. Jennifer Schmidt, key takeaways from today's session. Thanks for being on as a guest today. Hi, good morning. Yeah, it is very eye-opening and emotional and um, yeah, just reminding myself, you know, during deals, sometimes they can go a little sideways. I've been in the business now for eight years. So recently there's been some really challenging ones, but they ended up closing up and everything was fine. But I noticed myself reacting differently. Um, I used to stress out way, way more, <laughs> but sometimes you kind of let things you know, go as they go and direct where you need to direct and let go where you need to let go. So you can still have that emotional capacity for your, your actual life. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yes, very powerful, very thought provoking. And I'll be working on that obituary probably within the next few. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Well, Jen, I appreciate you being here. I'm going to go over to Melody and then I'm going to have Otis White uh, uh, close this out today. So Melody, I uh, just want to hear from you. Key takeaways. You and I are on a similar wavelength in life. Um, so I want to hear from you. Like, what are some of your key takeaways now that you have the quintessential um, Zoom car? Let's hear from you. Well, can you actually go on Zoom in a Tesla? You're on it. And it's the quietest atmosphere to ever be on a Zoom call. So let's hear from oh, you. <laughs> okay. I, you said it like there was like an app for that or something. <laughs> no. Um so key takeaways from today is, um, first of all, I watched the Warriors win the championship last night and it really moved me. It, it, you know, we only have one life, right? And this is not, this is not a training. This is like the final roll call. And I feel like for me, you know, 
I've been taking things a little bit more seriously lately. I went, you know, went through ups and downs in this market over the last nine years. I used to be really, really emotional and I used to let little things get to me. Um, and, and now I'm just kind of settled in and grounded in who I am and what I want my life to look like. And I'm really starting to take control of my business again in a more powerful way. And I feel like I've been on this journey where, you know, I've different people have come into my life, like Elias, you know, has really impacted my life in a major, major way. And, um, just knowing you guys, knowing Elias, knowing Kenny, knowing these people that are operating at a high level makes me want to be operating at a high level because I don't want to let the team down. I, I want to also practice and shoot the shots and be, you know, in, in the gym at 5.00 AM practicing my training, listening to the scripts while I'm doing my reps, you know, practicing what I'm going to say to my clients in the car, like, you know, in the mirror, talking to myself, letting myself know that I'm going to get one more, you know, call in today. I'm going to get one more connection in today. I'm going to meet some new people. I'm going to impact someone's life today. I'm going to actually make a difference. And, and once you start telling yourself that and you change the conversation in your own head, I think that you just show up different. Yes. And that's, what's been happening for me oh. lately. And so, um, I hopped on the call a little late, but I, I keep hearing it was an emotional call. I'm a little jealous. I'm going to go back on YouTube and rewatch the beginning because I missed the, I missed the beginning, but, um, yeah, it's, it's a really beautiful thing yeah. to be on this team. Well, I appreciate you, Mel. And, and it was hard not to be em emotional today, especially after, you know, getting Lily and she's still sleeping over here, but it's just been an emotional couple of days. And um, I watched a movie last night on the plane. It was called, uh, it's the underdog movie. It's about Kurt Warner. Uh, even if you guys aren't into sports, I, I highly, highly recommend that everybody watch that movie. I forgot the name of it. I think it's called it, somebody mute themselves. Uh, it's like, I don't know who's talking. Mosin, can you mute yourself? Yep. All right, thank you. All right, so, um, Super, super emotional. I love that. So, Otis, I want you to uh, <clears throat> take us off the field, my brother. You, um, you know, obviously huge Warriors fan, but let's take the champions off the field, man, and what that means, playing like a champion, seeing your team win, bro. Let's come full circle on that and have you close out the meeting for today, big dog. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming back to me. Uh, very powerful class today, you guys. Um, earlier in this week, I felt like I, I didn't get it, but today I for surely fucking got it. Uh, full circle, talked about production, teamwork, performing at a high level, uh, from closing uh, high volumes like Will is doing to getting your first ones to my girl Ilona and my boy Cortez. Big up to them because they've been grinding their ass off. Um, I think the analogy that Elias was trying to use there, it doesn't matter. If you're hungry, you're going to get that first one. If you're still hungry, you're going to keep producing at a high volume. Um, to, to dub it in with the dubs, uh, championship DNA. We know the team got it. We know we number one. But what are we all individually doing? We all individually have that fucking MVP mentality. We need to be Steph. It's okay to take a day off like he took off in game five. We ain't always going to be Superman, but he bounced back with 34, got that MVP. So don't let nobody tell you guys you can't fucking do anything. Every day someone on this team is is riding a new high for something that they couldn't do. Just look at some of the people um, that I were just talking earlier, uh, Teresa and Chris, people that shied away from the camera are now getting on there like straight bosses. So big... <laughs> Um, I just want to say that this team is everything. Everybody always says that. Um, but let's start getting these individual accolades in. Let's start challenging yourself. Um, mm -hmm. One of the challenges today, um, even though we're not uh, accountability partners, we took it upon ourselves to be accountability partners, and that's Chris and Cortez. And I told the three of them we were going to get a fucking deal done this week and look at Cortez. Bow! Let's, so let's go. So I just oh, want yes. everyone out there rock your fucking open houses lock down those contracts go flip those buyers to sellers and vice versa and go ahead and do your thing have a good weekend and to all the fathers out there the grandpas the uncles the mamas the single people that are out there making these children's go big happy father's day to y'all you seen little reese over there we're gonna go into the office if anybody's in the office that want to hop in our picture we got it from 11 30 so big ups to the team happy father's day all to all the daddies out there i love you guys um I will see everybody on Monday. I'm actually going to take baby to the office today. We're going to take a couple pictures, so I'll be there in just a little bit. But you guys, um, get out there today and play like champions, right? Play like champions. It's bro, me and you.
Cool, man. Cool. Play like champions. Do the work. Watch the tape. Run the routes. Do whatever it takes to play like a champion. You guys know what that feels like. So do what you need to do to win. Peace. I appreciate you guys more than you guys know. Get out there and have a wonderful day and play like champions. Bye. Thanks.